Good morning. Oh, no, sit down, sit down, sit down. Good morning. Ooh. Oh, it seems ages since I've been here. You'll you be quite pleased about that, actually. If I nod off, I've been on nights. <laughs> but it was, as, as always, a privilege. Um, a lovely lady. In fact, actually, she was um, a German accent. I detected German, Austrian, so like that. So, um, and quite demanding through the night, which is fine, you know. And, but then she did say this morning, I want my teeth! <laughs> I could not find the teeth. Anyway, I did find them in the adventure. They were in the tissue box. <laughs> like you do. Like you do. But yes, it's... Um, and it was so warm in the night. About six o'clock this morning, it was 23 degrees. And I was thinking... <gasps> so I opened the, the door, and a cat came in, and then some moths. And But the other night, I was out, and um, I was just waiting outside to go in, and a badger walked past which is quite bizarre, isn't it, really? So, yes, wildlife abundance when you're on night. Um, okay, I'm just going to... Um, fire. This is called Reliant on Modern Technology. Ooh, what we got on this... Oh, nothing. Just me on the screen. Ooh, dear. Is everybody all right? Are you well? Are you well? Oh, that's good. Are we well in technology? This is also good. Are we um, well in voice to sing? This is good. This is, this is called doing something while I try and find what we're doing. Okay, we're all right now. So, our first PowerPoint slide. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh, is that not the first one? Oh, can't we have Welcome to Purton? Oh, what a shame, because I, I had it flying in. Welcome to Purton. It flew in. Did a bit of a <laughs> flashed a bit. I've got too much time on my hands, haven't I? And then just went da da. Right, so anyway, never mind. So we'll move on. So I thought we'd change things about a bit, really, get these out of the way. So, Joe, are you doing notices today? Oh, lovely. So we're going to do our notices today. So uh, those people who would like to leave before the notices, <laughs> tough. We're here. Right then. Thank you. Morning. Uh, to be honest, I haven't even looked at this. Um, <laughs> there's a midweek service at Courses Court at 10.45. That'll be May, so I'm sorry. Um, uh, Just a reminder that everything to do with Julie is still on the table out there if you haven't signed to go to a party or a everything else. <laughs> um, uh, Sue has asked me to say there's a list on a flower list if you want to donate to the flowers it goes up to October so if you would like to tick a box on that um, uh, there's a special birthday today it's Dawn's 60th birthday but she's not here she's off somewhere at Gallivanting um, <laughs> but uh, is there any other birthdays this week Ron Ron Oh, next Sunday. Well, I'm not here next Sunday. You'll have to say hello, uh, happy birthday to Ron next Sunday. But that, that's about it. Thank you. Lovely. You could have had a 
choice, could you? You could have had today, next Sunday, or both, really. <laughs> both. So, well, anyway, good morning, and it's lovely to see you here, although it's a bit, as my mum calls it, puthery. So, that's a northern expression. So, we're going to have our first hymn today, which is... Blessed be the name. I gave the choice to our lovely musicians and I said, just choose what you would like to sing. So th- if you don't like them, it's their fault. <laughs> okay, so please, st- please stand if you're able for our first hymn, Blessed Be Your Name. Thank you. <laughs> to start. Please take a seat. Yes, and blessed be your name. Oh, I like that song. It never gets boring for me. I don't know about you. I don't know about your uh, choices of, of, of hymns and songs and things, but some are like thinking, oh, I can't sing this one again. It doesn't do it for me, but that one always does. So thank you for choosing that one. That's lovely. Right. Um, as you know, um, I work for, for Compton, and um, and also, and, um, and from what I do uh, is night sit. And I'd just like to take the opportunity to um, offer some prayer now for um, 
people that are, are struggling at home with a cancer diagnosis or a long-term illness because Compton um, now has, has expanded really and it's working with people who've got MS or Parkinson's as well as cancer and other long-term um, health conditions. I know somebody's come to me this morning and said that they would like our prayers for, would you, do you want me to say? Alwyn. Alwyn. We'll just call it Alwyn. So special prayers for Alwyn this morning, so please pray. Lord, there are many people uh, that are suffering in with their health and they are battling with a horrible disease, a horrible condition. It could be long term. It could be something that's end of life care is hours or days away. We pray for those people now as they go through a fear and also an acknowledgement of what's happening. We also pray for their families and their friends and pray for the um, carers that come in. Pray for the, uh, the doctors, the chemists, everybody involved with that care and that process, whether that's going to be end of life today or something long term. We've got some horrible diseases like the MS and motor neurons that just take little bits of people away. So we offer those people to you, God, today. And we're always going to question why, God, why does this happen? But as I've said probably before, we'll never know. Well, we will do one day. But there's got to be that comfort and support for us and family and for the patient as well, knowing that we've said prayers today and tonight and tomorrow and that, you know, we can just extend our love through Jesus Christ so that we can get the strength and the power to be able to support and think about and pray for anyone who is struggling with a long-term illness. Amen. Thank you. Um, we've got the creed now. Have we got the creed? Ooh, that's good. <laughs> right. Um, all will be revealed, but the reason we've changed things about a bit this week and we haven't um, got the, the um, readings that we were supposed to have is um, part of my course that I'm doing, which I've nearly got to the end. <sighs> I've never realised that I would get to the end. <laughs> um, so please stand if you're able, and we're going to say the creed together. <coughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And if you're okay to remain standing, we've got our second hymn, which is... Amazing Grace. 
Oh, amazing grace. That's lovely. Thank you. <coughs> Take a seat. Thank you. Um, the theme today, well, it, it was a bit um, interesting. It was re reconciliation and forgiveness and, and stuff. I am really bad <coughs> at that. I am really bad at saying, I forgive you. I hold a bit of a grudge, especially if somebody cuts me up in my car. And I try not to get really cross, especially, well, not so much now, but when the kids were in the car and you were going, you shut up, calm, calm. And I was thinking about um, forgiveness um, with regards to Joseph, who is our star witness, I mean star character or... He's the guy today, anyway, Joseph. Not Joseph, not Jesus' dad, but the 19-year-old who's got a right chip on his shoulder, I think, sometimes. So I found um, a couple of things about forgiveness, and they're on a PowerPoint bit. So if we could say these together, please. Dear God, if I hurt others, give me the strength to apologise. If people hurt me, give me the strength to forgive. And then there's another one as well. Thank you. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing 
and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's an acclimation -y thing. Did you get that? Is that it? Oh, lovely. Thank you. Mine is very different on here. I've got power. You know, I just had, obviously had too much time. I've got bright PowerPoint. I've got pink and blue and yellow background. But wouldn't it work on that then? Oh. It's not compatible. I'm not compatible with, com with computers, obviously. So, an acclamation. So, it's a little bit more about this reconciliation and forgiveness and where we see ourselves with God. So, visit... Uh, well, you could, uh, there was a bit... I'll say the bit in white. And then if you could say the bit in yellow, that would be lovely. Visit us with your salvation and sustain us with your gracious spirit. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. He is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. All glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, ever. Amen. When I was at church in the choir, we used to have to turn and when we said that and face the altar. Isn't it funny how those things have disappeared a little bit rightly or wrongly i don't know but yeah i do remember that when we said especially evening song you used to have to turn and face the altar so we are now going to sing again our third is it third one a third hymn and this is going to be our collection phil First thing he said to me, well, first, second thing actually, first thing he said, excuse me, <laughs> that was good, and then he said, which hymn's the collection? And then we had a big debate about which hymn could be the collection, and then Jo said she didn't like one hymn for collection, so then we carried on the debate about having the collection and which was the best hymn. So I said, well, you choose. But that wasn't good either. So we've gone for this one. So here we go. And it's one of my favourites, actually. So let us stand, if you're able, and sing at the name of Jesus. <coughs>
him, when I went to uh, hear my bands being read at St Nicholas Church, that was the hymn, one of the hymns that they played. And the organist, obviously, was great and on something, because, you know that bit, Bruce, when you do the... Da, 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 da. So he twiddled it, and he went... Da, 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 da. And I went, oh my lap. So Bruce, next time, <laughs> you know, and then we can have a, like a Wurlitzer with you coming through, <laughs> up through the floor. Yeah. But I thought, I, honestly, I tried not to laugh because it was obviously something. Da, 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 da. Yeah, he loved it. Absolutely loved it. As I say, he felt like he was on something. I thought, I'll have some of that. Right, I would like to welcome up two lovely people to be our readers today. Now, the second reading is going to be read by um, David's stunt double. Because David is not well. So, uh, Sue is very kindly um, going to appear as David's stunt double. I'm not sure what little traits David has got that Sue is going to apply really but anyway so um so can we have our first and second bods oh joan how are you doing do you want me to move the table are you all right you're going to come this way you're one of my favorite readers you were much better than last week's <laughs> he was reading last week oh, I'm so <laughs> There we go. Do you want there, or do you want Bible? Oh, yes, I want that, please. You can most certainly can, my Thank love. you. There we go, Jane. Lovely. Okay, okay. Cheryl. All right. Lovely. Thank you. The first reading is uh, from Genesis 37 verses 1 to 11. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhar and the sons of Zilpah his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen, this is the dream I had. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered round mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and what he had said. <clears throat> then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said. I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your, will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him. 
but his father kept the matter in mind. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I am looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, Let's go to Dotton. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dotton. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him. And throw him into one of these cisterns they st- and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, They stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty, there was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, the boy isn't there, where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornate robe back to their father and said, we found this, examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. He recognized it and said, it is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, The Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks 
Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Sue. Sorry, David. He's done double. Just bear with me two seconds. I'll just get to the right page. So it's me. It's my bit now. Um, but before my bit, um, as you can see, there is uh, a little... You know I like to, to get everybody to, to do a little something um, uh, just to waste time. I mean, no, sorry. It's obviously just to make the, um, the story uh, become real. So um, here is... Um, uh, something I prepared earlier. did need a mic actually never mind it's all right no don't worry i'll just stay here and then i'll talk so um so reconciliation and forgiveness and thinking about some of those things that actually you don't really want to say sorry for or and reconciliation is is more about um just saying sorry isn't it it goes i think goes quite deeper so um joseph many times i think was asked wasn't he to forgive his brothers and uh, well lots of people which we'll talk about in a little while but i thought it would be lovely if you could come up take a um, bit of scarf helena could you be my um, demonstrator <laughs> we could get you a job on qvc after this so take a little bit of a scarf there we are, and then thread it through somewhere, somewhere on, the, on the tunic. And hopefully it will look like Joseph's, well, a little bit like Joseph's coat. But why you thread that material, have a think about forgiveness and reconciliation. You can think about Joseph and his family. And there must be lots of families that are really struggling and they've... Um, fallen out and you know and that it would be lovely to just encourage people to you might are you nutting oh you don't need to weave you can just do one there's just some people aren't there they just go too far So, um, if you'd like to come up, and while you're doing that, I'm going to, well, I was going to sing, but I'm not now because that would be crazy, but I'm going to read out the colours of Joseph's coat. So, please come. Oh, and also, you can take a little sweetie of forgiveness. So, we can all leave here today knowing that we've asked to be forgiven or we're going to forgive something and take a sweetie as well. So please come up, take a piece of material and then just put it through a loop on the tunic. Thank you. Right, are you ready? So, I never really... Come up, come up, come up. If I finish this, Barbie, you, could, you could play something, couldn't you, in a minute? Do you know anything? <laughs> Happy. So, the coat was red and yellow and green and brown, scarlet and black and ochre and peach, ruby and olive and violet and fawn, cream and crimson, silver and rose. Purple and white and pink and orange. Scarlet and black and... Oh, we've done that one before. Ochre and peach. Ruby, olive, violet, fawn. Mauve. 
think that's right. Blue, red. So this colour, these material must have been absolutely amazing, but made him stand out. Could you play a little something? Okay, they're going to consult. Don't forget to think, though, about your forgiveness and reconciliation or think about some of the things that, you know, somebody else needs to be involved in. Thank you. And we're just going to listen to our lovely singers. Thank you. No, they didn't know. No. I like to keep people on the toes. Element of surprise. You're welcome. You're very, very welcome. You can do more than one. And we can do some more afterwards as well. Lovely, thank you. And if you do want to come up after the service and and put some more on, that would be lovely. Right.
Let us pray. Lord, the words that I'm going to speak today, may they resonate with you and resonate with us. Let us um, take on your word and use it as we go out into your world. Amen. Ooh. Where's that gone now? Sorry. I'm trying not to do paper. I'm trying to be really good and be um, eco and whatever and use a computer to um, uh, but I've got so many things open op open that's it okay um, as you know I'm, I've been doing a readers course and I'm almost coming to the end and um, one of the things that we've got to do next week is a talk on Joseph Novello when he put in Joseph Novello, there's quite a few things that come up and nothing to do with Joseph in the Bible. So I had to do a little bit more digging. And as I did, I suddenly realised there were some connections. Joseph was very much like Jesus, which is like, wow, this is big. So my talk today is Joseph is like Jesus and does it help the choices that we make and influence our future Joseph was very different nothing negative was actually written about him he takes up a big chunk of Genesis nobody else gets a bigger mention he was as we heard uniquely loved by his father and of course, he had that tunic of many colours that was made for him specially. He was special to uh, Jacob because he was born in Jacob's old age. And also born by Rachel, um, the favourite wife of Jacob. This tunic was seamless with many colours, it was beautiful. And as you've heard me read out the colours, that must have been amazing. When everybody else had got very brown and dark and plain colours. The connection with Jesus here is, I think, when Jesus was being baptised, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son, who I am well pleased and Jacob would have said the same. This is my beloved son. I'm well pleased and I've bought him this beautiful gift. Jesus had all the authority given unto him from, from heaven and on, and, and on earth. As soon as Jesus was baptised, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, was the heavens opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and sat alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, who I love with, and I am well pleased. Jesus had a seamless robe, sewn from top to bottom, when he was crucified. And it was removed from him quite violently, and because it was good cloth, it was given, well, actually the soldiers had to draw lots to find out who was going to get it. They didn't want to rip it up. One person wanted it, wanted that beautiful, seamless tunic, just like Joseph's. Soldiers participating in crucifixion at that time had the right to take what they wanted from a victim. In Jesus' case, there are five articles of clothing, probably some kind of head cover, his sandals, a cloak, and a belt. 
The undergarment, a tunic, seems to have been the highest quality item. And then, as I say, rather than rip the fabric apart, four soldiers gambled to see who kept his coat, his beautiful, seamless tunic. It was a souvenir. Not a very nice one, though, really. And when we go back to Joseph, that tunic was removed and as proof that he was dead, well, allegedly dead, that piece of clothing was removed as proof that Jesus was going to be crucified. The commanding officer, being well paid, probably had no interest in the garments, as it said in Matthew. But the soldiers underneath him definitely wanted it. So we come back to Joseph then, who was hated by his brothers. And you can see why. He had uh, uh, these dreams. Um, he was young, much younger than them, and knew that he was favoured by his father more than the brothers. He didn't even have to do any work. Jealousy was rife for him. And that jealousy grows in that chapter. When we look at Jesus, the common people loved him, but the authority didn't. The authority and the religious leaders, the Sanhedrin, were jealous of him because he drew crowds. He drew crowds wherever he went of the common people. And so those authority, those people in authority, sorry, were jealous. And what they needed to do was bear false witness or get somebody to bear false witness and tell lies. Joseph's brothers had to tell lies to get Joseph removed because he really was annoying and they were fed up of his dreams and him saying he was better than them. The Sanhedrin in Jesus' life well, they were the authority. And when Jesus was arrested, he was put on trial by the Sanhedrin. And this was the highest ruling council of the Jews. There were 70 members, mostly made up of Sadducees, Pharisees and priests, plus the leader who was the high priest. When Jesus was on trial, the high priest was Caiaphas. Joseph's brothers put him on trial, really, in a strange sort of way. The cisterns that they talked about in the desert were huge, huge, massive, and deep, uh, well, Probably, well, they're supposed to be for water, but most of the time they were empty. But they were massive, and they were, once you were in, that was it. You couldn't get back out again. Joseph was sold for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites. And his brothers thought that was a really good idea rather than killing him because they didn't want the blood on their hands. Actually, we could probably think that God was part of that to save Joseph's life. So the connection there to Jesus is that Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus on this earth created great crowds of people as they heard of his miracles and his stories and 
things that people wanted. They wanted that relationship with him. The closest people were his 12 disciples. The similarity there is that Joseph had 12 brothers. He disclosed Jesus' whereabouts. Obviously, we're talking about Judas Iscariot now. By t- taking the army to the Garden of Gethsemane, and as we know, he kissed the side of Joseph's, uh, sorry, Jesus's cheek, and was paid the thirty pieces of silver. So that payment to get rid of. That payment to get rid of Joseph, pieces of silver. The payment to get rid of Jesus, pieces of silver. In that garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was praying with the other apostles and they identified Jesus with a kiss, as we said. It's funny that we don't hear a lot about Joseph's relationship with God at that time, but He definitely had a relationship. And I think God in the Genesis is a a storyteller. There's definitely narrative there. And this is why I'm uh, reading this with you now, because I've got to tell next week uh, the Bible as a story. And I think God was uh, set up some tension with things that he talked about, that he told the stories about. I think he'd got a sense of humour as well. Falsely Falsely accused of crimes he didn't commit. The assault on Mrs. Potiphar. She constantly enticed him to sleep with her. And when he finally said, my God is looking and I cannot sin against him, he was thrown into prison. So there we see that relationship that Joseph had with God. He didn't want to risk that. He was a good man. Although he did have these odd things where he told these um, about his dreams but I believe that God was telling him that was a good thing to do to share those dreams they said Jesus perverted the cause of justice Jesus told lies and Jesus falsely said things and that got him into trouble where we talked about the Sanhedrin not believing what Jesus was saying. And even the the accused of stopping the people paying their taxes to Caesar. Perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute. St. Luke's report of the accusation is more definite than that in the other Gospels. The question asked in Luke was obviously intended to lead up to this. And though then baffled by our Lord's answer, the priest now brought, backed by false witnesses, the charges for which they had hoped to find evidence in his own words. It seems probable that these facts came to the writer's knowledge in the same way as those that immediately follow. It may be noted that the charge in the Greek is slightly enlarged. The question that referred as reported by St. Matthew and St. Mark to one form of tribute, the census or poll tax. The charge speaks of taxes in the plural and uses the most general words. In Luke, the same word is used as in the verse, but in the singular. St. Paul, in a passage which may well have been based on St. Luke's report of our Lord's words, used the same term, first generically in the plural and then in the singular, contrasted with customs and duties. 
So they were constantly using Jesus' words to get him into trouble. False claims. And people started to believe. Joseph was placed into prison with two other men. A baker and a cup bearer, which I believe was a waiter. But there are other um, suggestions. One of those people in prison with Joseph was set free. And the other was killed. Jesus was crucified between two criminals. One was killed and one set free. The one mocked and blasphemed and died in sin. But the other cried out and said, Lord, remember me when you enter your kingdom. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that had the, the, that was called Golgotha, where the skull was, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Joseph, um, in the prison, uh, talked about his dreams. And when the baker was released, he talked about Joseph's dreams. And that's how then the reading progresses and that um, he ends up being the prime minister and takes on a, a role of authority. For all intents and purposes, Joseph was dead, his father believed. The tunic was dipped in blood to make him believe that he'd been attacked by an animal and died. But once in Egypt, he told his brothers, go and tell my father I am alive. Jacob's heart stood still. Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. The prince was dead, but God raised him. Another similarity with Joseph. When we hear of the crucifixion story, do our hearts stand still when we know that he was raised from the dead? Christ's resurrection has been at the heart of the church's message from the, uh, the day he died until Pentecost to the present. By raising him from the dead, Jesus Christ was, was demonstrating that he had cleansed the guilt of our past and he is able to help us in our present lives. His resurrection assures us that our future is safe and secure. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And we are witnesses of the fact. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know has been made strong. Joseph was made strong by his, his dreams that God was telling him to say, that God was urging him to uh, make plans and share that with the rulers so that famine would not affect some of, the fam some of his family. Joseph became the Prime Minister of Egypt and was in charge of everything, especially the food. And we think back to the dream he had of the sheaves in the fields, right back in the beginning. Jesus became in charge of everything and everyone. 
My father has given me the authority, he said. I am the bread of life. Everyone who comes to me will not hunger, who believes in me will not thirst. He is saying that ultimately he can satisfy our deepest needs and longings. He can make us feel full and overflowing with blessings. Joseph's dream, when everyone bowed down, including his mother and father and brothers, angered even his dad. It even angered Joseph, Jacob. In Egypt, everyone bowed down to him, though. And as we've heard in the, the hymn, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess he is glory now. The fingerprint of the Holy Spirit, the whole Bible, is full of Jesus, old and new. That connection is all the way through. And sometimes we forget that. When Jesus was along the road of Emmaus, Jesus said, slow of heart, beginning at Moses, I am mentioned in Genesis and Ruth and Leviticus. The connection between Joseph and Jesus is amazing. And we need to think about our reconciliation and our forgiveness. And we also need to think that, are we like Jesus? Do we act, sound, feel and talk? Do we believe in the light of the world and that taking that light of the world out? God brings adversity into our lives so that you can depend on God and God can depend on us and use us to work for him. Just like Joseph, just like Jesus. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. When you leave this place today, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Thank you. Amen. Now, I'm a stunt double now. Pete was going to be our doing our intercessions, but he's not here. I don't know where he is, but uh, we shall say a prayer for him. So I'm doing intercessions. And I put a little picture on. Did I put a little picture on? Gonna get really fed up of hearing my voice today. Ooh, next one. We'll still say that little prayer at the end. So let us pray. Lord, there has been such a lot going on in the world this week. It's hard to know where to start. We've had the tragedy of that sub that was going to look at the wreck of the Titanic. And sadly, five more lives have been taken in connection with the Titanic. We pray for their families. We pray for the people that designed the, the sub, those people who wanted to create something wonderful for somebody. It's not their fault. They didn't intend. There was no intention for this to happen. But they must be feeling so low. We pray for the rescuers who desperately tried to get there in time. And we pray for them now as they return home, return to their normal jobs. We pray for those people that may have to investigate and work out why it happened. Where did we go wrong? 
there's a lot of things that happen where people have to investigate and work out where we went wrong. Disasters. Things that have happened with floods and earthquakes and those buildings that didn't survive. Where did we go wrong? Lord, I hold all those people in your heart because that must be the hardest job to say, was I part of that? We hold in prayer all the anger and war and arguments and everything that's going on where people just want to fight and win and blame each other. Ukraine has been in the news again and it just doesn't seem to be able to get sorted. Where's the reconciliation? I pray, Lord, that we can get reconciliation. But there must be some people there of saying, where do we go wrong? Why am I part of this army? Why have I signed up to kill other people? I don't think I wanted to do that, but I've just swayed along. Where did I go wrong? We pray for people here in Purton, we pray for people here in our church. We pray for people that, as we've probably said, that are poorly, that we know, in mind, body and spirit. And let's just have a moment quiet as we think about those who are precious to us at this moment in time. We hold um, our team here who are responsible for the church, the services, our music. We pray for Julia as she continues on her sabbatical and hope that she's refreshed. And we pray for anybody else who feels that they need to be refreshed. Hold them in your prayers, Lord. We pray for anybody who has passed, who's died. May they party in glory with you, Lord. And we will say together the prayer that is on the screen, and then we will say the Lord's Prayer. Pray first before doing anything. Do not worry about it alone. Pray with all your heart for even the smallest thing. Pray for justice and righteousness. Strength is denying God, denying God and the angels. If God helps you, can do it. Continue to pray so that you understand this god does the work so we hold it we give it to god at the end of the day i ask you to give your worries and your prayers and your thanks to god and now we will say the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven Amen. you are the and oceans. Hallowed be your name. Care we take your creation. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Our greed, our exploitation, our lack of concern for other species and for future generations. As we forgive those who trespass against us, our reconciliation with justice and peace. Lead us not into temptation, to equate dominion with exploitation. And deliver us from evil, evil of destroying your gift of creation. For yours is the kingdom, yours, Lord, not ours. The power and the glory, the cross and resurrection, for ever and ever. You are the beginning and you are the end. Amen. Thank you. We are now at the end, and we have got one hymn left. We've saved one in the bag. So please stand if you are able, and we're going to sing... Be There My Vision. Be
Thank you. Take a seat, please. One last thing. To do your word, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, we've done birthdays, we've done dentists. All I've got left to say is, please stay and have a cuppa. And um, if you want to put a few more um, pieces of material on it, that would be lovely. Thank you. Because I need to take a photograph of it and then use it for my exam next week so um, let us pray Lord as we leave this place today let us go out let us be like Jesus let us be like Joseph let us forgive let us think about what we need to do to be like Jesus and encourage others as well. And let people know how great our God is. Amen. Amen. So have a lovely uh, rest of the day in the sunshine. And the rest of the week. Is it going to be nice, the rest of the week, sunshine? No. Rain, thunder. That's my dog then, disappearing up her own bottom. <laughs> oh, she does not like the thunder. So please enjoy a cup of tea and a chat, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.